Hi, Poonam. How are you doing today? Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm really excited. Well, I want to thank you again for being my guest. And I'm just so happy to be here asking you 11 questions today. Yeah. And I want to start off by asking you about what your professional background is and how did you transition into being an author? Sure. So my background is kind of all over the place. My education is in economics and finance and public policy. So numbers and government, basically. Then I moved to becoming a professor of economics, and then I moved to being a consultant. Um, and when I lost my job, I was bored. I'm not going to even like try to make it inspired. I was bored, <laughs> um, but I was also incredibly depressed. I was struggling with a lot of mental illness. So I was like, okay, I'm bored. I'm struggling with mental illness and I have no job, so I can't afford therapy. Um, so what do I do? And journaling was always a really good, is a good way to kind of clean out your mind and feel lighter. So I would journal a lot. And in that journaling became a book, how I became an author. That's awesome. In the professional context, what's the kindest thing that someone has ever done to you? Who I have been very blessed. When I was a teacher, um, I worked really hard with my students and I, you know, I adored them. They were like my own kids. I was teaching a night class from seven to 10. All right. And those kids are, they tend to also be people who work eight to five. So they come eight to five, then come to class. And they were always the, my most engaged kids. They worked hard. They were the best. One of the girls was trying to get into an MBA program at Texas A&M. She was like, I have no idea how to apply for grad school. I have no idea how to do anything. So we worked together one night after class uh, from 9.15 to like 10.30. We worked, we worked. Next day, she had her interview. Next week, she got into the school and she wrote me this really sweet letter and gave me a Starbucks gift card. And like, you know, it was, that wasn't the nice part. The nice part was she was so overwhelmed and it was nice in the sense like, you know, I was able to be that with, for that student. Um, but also she keeps in touch with me. She talks to me all the time. She emails me, updates me. So the kindest thing for me that someone's ever done in my professional career was give me the opportunity to be a part of their life beyond school. That's such a great memory to have. Yeah. If you were to pick only one book to read forever, which one would that be? Oh, the disrespect. Okay. Um, <laughs> Dang, that is a hard question. I know. So I love the Percy Jackson series. I read those books over and over and over again. But if I had to pick one, it would probably be The Mark of Athena by Rick Gordon. It's the follow-up series where he blends Greek and Roman mythology. I think it's that one. But dude, that was a hard question. Like, well done. <laughs> That was hard. I, well, I had no idea. It's interesting that you chose series as opposed to one book, but I'm going to let it slide. <laughs> I know. I was like, I'm just going to see if she'll like let that slide and go over it. <laughs> What's one book that you think is just overhyped? Ooh, that, there's a lot. Um, ooh. You know what? I'll tell you what. Romeo and Juliet, I think is <laughs> overrated. I'm with you on that one. I, I'm reading this. I'm like, are y'all dumb? Like if you had just waited 10 minutes or had better communication, they didn't even make a plan to like run away together, even fake their <laughs> own deaths. There's so many possibilities that could have happened. Like, I don't know. Like I remember reading at the end of it, I'm like, this is the greatest romance of all time. <laughs> it was like 10 pages and they're dumb. Like this is so stupid. So Romeo and Juliet. Yes, good answer. What's your biggest pet peeve? I have so many. Um, <laughs> um, I have so many pet peeves. So my philosophical pet peeve is people who are arrogantly ignorant. They drive me up the wall because, you know, we're all ignorant. We all are like, there's something that we all don't know about. But if you're arrogant about your ignorance, it just makes me so violently angry that it takes all of my energy to not punch you in the face. And social media is even worse about it, which is why I hate being on there because everyone thinks that they're all woke and that they all have an opinion and that their opinion should be held in the same level as like an experts even. And I'm like, no. So that's my philosophical pet peeve. And then my regular technical life pet peeve is people who don't indicate where they're going on the road. They just <laughs> move. That's my pet peeve. Okay. I think I've gotten you a little agitated. So <laughs> next question is that 
what's one thing that you do that can calm you down instantly? Deep breathing, for sure. I used to be super against like meditation and yoga because I was a bodybuilder for a long time. And, you know, there's that stigma like, oh, yoga is not real exercise. Like meditation is hippy dippy stuff. Before even quarantine, I do yoga and meditation every night. And I've seen a tremendous difference physically, mentally, emotionally. So honestly, it's just deep breathing. Like if I'm genuinely angry, I used to just boil from the inside out. And now I just deep breath, rationalize what's going on, calm my anxiety down and then handle it from there. Now let's also touch on something we have in common, our brown slash Indian culture. <laughs> what's one thing that you absolutely love about our culture? I'm going to be very candid here. I just started getting into my culture because I am from the South. It's not that I didn't have a lot of diversity. I did, but it's just, there's a culture here in the South, it's debutante culture. It's football culture. I mean, football is a religion here. Um, you know, very Christian culture, blonde hair, blue eyed, you know, white. From when I was growing up, Indians were only known for being smart. That's it. Like if you needed to cheat off a test, find the next Indian kid. If you needed science help or tech help, ask the Indian geek. And so as a young girl, you're, that sucks because you want to also be beautiful, right? And this was when I stupidly thought that beauty had one standard. I couldn't be both intelligent and beautiful, right? All, as if somehow those were, you know, independent from each other. And so I spent a long time rejecting my culture, a very long time. I would tell people I was mixed. I would tell people that I wasn't Indian. I could get away with a lot of different ethnicities. Now, that being said, because I'm getting back into it, my favorite part of our culture is our music. It is just so beautiful and so good. I can't understand Hindi at all. And okay. yet somehow these songs will make me cry. How? I don't even know what you're <laughs> saying. And I'm sobbing in my room. <laughs> and it's, it's just the music is so beautiful. The singing is beautiful. Even the hype songs, you know, and I'm talking about older Bollywood, not like this new nonsense where they have to interject Western everything into that old Bollywood music, yes. And what's one thing that you would change or like to take away from our culture? Oh God, that's a lot. Uh, I love our culture, but there's a lot to be improved upon. I'm torn between treating our women better and making mental health a thing. I'll stick with mental health because that's something that everybody is inclusive in. Do you know, they'll say stupid things like this pain in your head is in your head. Yes, that is what I am telling you. I would want to change that saying that you're not losing your culture because you're suffering in silence. And that's the Indian way. That is stupid. That's like saying I'm not eating because my ancestors didn't eat and I'm suffering in silence. Bitch, you're about to die. Like eat something. We can keep our Indian culture. We can keep certain things. And just because we're letting go of the bad things doesn't mean our culture is going to go away. We're just making certain things better for our future kids. That's all. Yeah, that pride in suffering, I never got it. Growing up in India, it's projected so much, especially on women. Like, you know, a yes. good wife suffers, a good mom suffers, just basically any good female suffers. It's like, why are you living then? Why do we want, you know, like, that's just so horrible. Like, you're only alive to suffer and raise these things called children yeah okay moving on we are living in covid and we can't yeah. travel get out but once things open up go back to normal which is the first place you will go to new zealand um oh, nice. my sister and i had planned a three-week trip in august of 2020 we were going to do new zealand in like two weeks and then go to australia for a week fml uh covid <laughs> and the wildfires happened it's crazy. This year has been such a jerk. Um, <laughs> but yeah, New Zealand. I cannot wait to go there. I also want to go there at some point, especially I want to see the Hobbiton. Gosh. Yes, that's literally why we're going. <laughs> that is literally why we're going because I'm such a Lord of the Rings fan and geek and ev all the good words about it. So that is, <laughs> we're dedicating like a whole four days just for that area. Because oh, I, yay. Post I pictures so on Instagram. Of. Yes, I will. I will totally <laughs> post pictures and everything and be like, okay, guys, for those of you living vicariously or until you get to New Zealand, this is what you have to look forward to. I can't wait. I cannot wait till travel is normal again. As bad as this year has been, I think there were also some lessons in it. What's been the biggest lesson for you? I think the biggest lesson for me is truly that 
the time is always now. So many people were like, don't launch a book in 2020. You know, no one's going to buy it. You can't do book signings. You can't do a book tour. You can't do diddly squat. I'm like, if we have learned anything is that I might not make it to 2021 or why wait? It may not be the ideal marketing time. I believe that even if it's not ideal, just do it. You know, and I can remarket now, right? Like that's what I'm doing now. I'm marketing this book again now because it's a good new year's book. So you just market it now, but at least it's been out. You know, I'm not wasting my time waiting for the right moment. Every moment is fleeting almost like you don't know if you're going to have another one. So last question, if you were to pick one interesting life experience that you can share with us today, what would that be? Okay. This one is interesting and funny, but it does have a deep meaning ish. It's really funny. Okay. So I was in Costa Rica two years ago. And on my birthday, we went zip lining and I love zip lining. I love bungee jumping, skydiving, all that jazz. I'm a big adrenaline junkie. So, okay. But the last zip line we went on was the longest and the tallest zip line in the entire area of like this obstacle, whatever. It was like a thousand plus feet from the ground. And it was like over a hundred feet long. Guess who got stuck? on the zip line <laughs> this girl so they were like okay you're tall enough you look like you weigh enough you should be good well i i went and i got stuck i sl- was slowing down slowing down <laughs> towards the middle of the zip line i'm like oh okay maybe they have like some machine that's gonna keep me going except i stopped in the middle of <laughs> oh the zip God. line <laughs> and so as i'm sitting there a thousand plus feet above the ground i'm like what a beautiful place to die because on the right side was this rainforest and there were monkeys literally swinging. And on the other side was the volcano and the beautiful Lake Aranal. It was gorgeous. So the view is beautiful. I was like, wow, like I'm about to die, but I'm not even like worried. It's so gorgeous out here. And then the guy who had to come get me, it was his first day on the job. He had to monkey climb from the other platform attach me to him and then monkey climb us back. Oh my God. On the very first day of his job, he had to literally save this dumb girl who's just hanging out in the (laughs) middle, looking around as she's about to die. So that was my best life experience because after that, I made a vow to myself that every year I was going to take a trip outside of the country. And if I die on a zip line, at least I didn't die in the U.S. It's fine. So that really inspired my annual trip promise to myself. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. And also this story is amazing. Poonam, thank you so much for joining me here today. It was so much fun talking to you. It was so much fun talking to you too. And thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure.